Hello everyone, Ian here at Able City and Burbank, and today it is raining. It is the first major storm we've had in Southern California in four years. And I took that as a sign to do a blog on Gates Housings. We now sell and rent the Gates Housings for underwater photography. And today I want to concentrate on the red epic and we're going to put an epic into the housing, show you the steps of how to put it in there, and then we're going to take it for a dive. First thing to know about Gates housings is that they are purpose built for specific cameras. There's no such thing as a generic housing that will work with an Alexa, F55, Epic, and so forth. So this uh, housing, although it shares common components with other types of Gates housings, is specific to the Red Epic. At the front here, we have our port. This is a dome port. Uh, this is the window that we use to look out into the water with our camera. And they are interchangeable. Uh, I simply take it and rotate this off. And this allows me to change my port. Uh, it has a little gasket here that meshes with this extension here. And the thing to know about diving and housings is that as you go further and further in the water, uh, you get more and more compression. So we're actually using that uh, characteristic of water, that compression, to our advantage to help us make everything uh, sealed. This is an extension unit that's held in by four screws. And we uh, supply different lengths of these extensions in our kits uh, simply to accommodate different types of lenses and camera combinations. Now there's a great reference on the Gates website that will show you optimal lens camera combinations. We have to include these simply to accommodate, first of all, for just the physical length of a lens, and then also to accommodate for the angle of view of particular lenses. On the back, this is the main control center for this particular housing. And you note it has this window for the red moat and buttons that are placed to interact with all the buttons on the red moat. At the top is the housing for the LCD. Once I house or, or enclose the red LCD in this housing, it is sealed up. I have no access to it. So operating the red like I do in a traditional uh, set up where I just touch the LCD screen, change my shutter angle, so on and so forth. That's not possible. So I have to route those functions to different uh, buttons on the red mode. And I also have the ability, for instance, on the side here with this lever, uh, this is where I actually change the sensitivity of the camera. If I'm using certain lenses, uh, I may not have the ability to change their iris. Therefore, I may have to use camera ISO as my option for exposure. Just next to the uh, housing for the LCD, I have a tally that gives me indication that I am in fact rolling underwater. And I also have a little port right here that comes, this little screw comes off and this exposes a multi-pin connector. This is how I can feed a signal to topside for video. So it is possible for directors, producers, whatnot, to see images being captured by the camera underwater through a special uh, cable that is made by Gates specifically for these housings. And I, of course, at the end of that cable is a BNC, so I could put a barrel on it and use traditional you know, video BNC cables. But this cable is specific to this housing. I have controls on both sides of handles that are fully adjustable. And I also have a series of knobs over here that allow me to interact with different lenses and different camera builds. All right, so here we are at our dive site today. Uh, we need to do two things to the housing before we take it under. First and foremost, we need to hook a compressor up to this or a pump up to this and pump the air out of it. That's gonna help the seals uh, make it watertight uh, to, the, to the front and back compartments going into the bulkhead and making sure we don't get any leaking. Uh, I'm also gonna take the pump and pump out the air here in the LCD finder. Last thing I'm going to do is check my buoyancy or my weight distribution. So I have tracks here and here, actually all over this, all over this housing, so I can get the buoyancy and get the balance right. So I'm not struggling with that underwater. 
uh, the two things you need to be aware of when you're uh, diving is that a diver is not only maintaining their own systems, their scuba gear, uh, the time they're underwater, the amount of oxygen they have left, the nitrogen levels, and the time uh, it takes to get back up to the surface safely, they're also maintaining this system as well. So it's things you have to think about uh, when you're considering underwater photography. All right, well, let's get it prepped and take it for a swim. back from the dive site and the first thing I did was wash this down with fresh water. Uh, you want to make sure to do that as soon as possible in chlorine but especially in salt water to avoid the uh, corrosive qualities that salt water has. And then I took forced air and I sprayed everything down making sure I went into the seams around the bulkhead just to ensure that I didn't get any water in the inside of the housing when I cracked it open. I want to thank Brandon Zachary for being my dive buddy today and also Nikki and Billy and the whole crew over at Hollywood Divers for being very supportive and helpful to get this done and also being very gracious to let us use their dive site today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.